Howdy! How's everybody out there in YouTube land today? I hope this finds you well. We're going to be doing some embellishments with this sawdust dough product that I've been telling you about. Uh, it's an easy make at home product. I'm to make it all up, but hey, anything worth having is worth spending the time on to do it right, isn't it? So I'll walk through this just a little bit again in case you missed the previous video that I did with the belt buckles uh, that I did out of Sodesto. And my friend Shelly Cole over at Know What Mom Knows came up with a recipe to make this glue and mix with sawdust in order to make a product that you can turn into something useful. Now, I filled in some belt buckle blanks with it in yesterday's episode, today's episode. I'm going to be making embellishments with these silicone molds. Now, Shelly had made some embellishments and sent them to me when she was first telling me about this product that she'd come up with. And she didn't charge nothing for this. You know, it's just sawdust that you can get from anybody that does woodworking. I always have sawdust laying around and she made this glue. Now, I'll walk you through how to make this. This is called stone glue. She has another recipe for one that's called flexi glue that uh, you can make so that your, your pieces are flexible. But this is stone glue here, and here's how you make it. And she's got recipe on her channel as well showing how you make this stuff. But you, you take 16 tablespoons of all-purpose flour, 16 tablespoons of granulated sugar, 16 tablespoons of water. She suggests that you use distilled water, but you can use tap water. Mix it together in a bowl until it's thoroughly mixed. Then you take your heavy body, heavy bodied, heavy bottomed saucepan. Put two cups of water in that saucepan. Get you a fine mesh strainer and strain your flour mixture into the water in that saucepan. That way, if there's any flour lumps or anything in it, you separate them out. Then you put that pot on a burner and set it on medium high heat. You just want to bring it to a simmer. Set your timer for 12 minutes and get your wire whisk and go to whisk in that flour mixture in that water over that simmering heat for 12 minutes. Do not stop. Just stir it the entire time. No matter, you know, if you think it might be done ahead of that, keep stirring. Stir until the timer goes off. When the timer goes off, turn off the heat. Remove the pan from the burner. Let it cool down a little bit and then pour it in a mason jar. Don't put a lid on your mason jar while it's hot. You want to put a paper towel, maybe a damp paper towel over the top of it, sit in the refrigerator, let it cool down. Then once it's cool, you can put a lid on it. And it coagulates like a gravy. She calls it her gravy glue. But you see there in the jar where it's kind of coagulated. And it is glue. It's all natural. When you're ready to make your sawdust, you pull this out of the refrigerator and you take a half a cup of your glue to one cup of sawdust. Put it in a bowl, put you on some rubber gloves and go to just kneading the fire out of it until it turns into a ball. Until all that glue is absorbed into your sawdust. Then what I did is I separated it out into four chunks and I took each chunk and mixed mica powder in it. Now you can use uh, all kinds of seasonings and stuff to get your color, anything, you know, natural product that you want to use. Or you can leave it alone, make your um, embellishments or whatever it is that you're going to do, just out of the, you know, it's, it's kind of a, well, it's, it's sawdust color and glue, basically. It's kind of a blah color. Uh, and then you can paint it if you want to. wouldn't be natural at that point, but, you know, you can do that if that's what you want to do. And I made belt buckle blanks out of it. Well, well let me back up on that. Once you add your color to either your ball, you're going to need the fire out of it until it's like a Play-Doh. It's, it's just a real um, um, kind of a rubbery texture. It's, it's smooth. It shouldn't be real crumbly. It's crumbled a little bit no matter what you do. But you see there, you know, it's all holding together real good and it's it's smooth. And I, I've separated mine out, try to get it over here where you can see it. There's four, divided it into four and, and uh, 
one's black, one's green, one's purple, and one's yellow because those are the colors that I grabbed in my mica powder. Mica powder is um, stone, ground stone, and it's all natural. Um, but you can use cinnamon, you can use chocolate, you can use um, anise, you can use turmeric. Uh, you know, all your spices and stuff from the kitchen you can use to make your colorants in this, and that would be all natural. And like I said, I made belt buckles yesterday. You can look at the video and see how I did that. But today, I've got all these silicone molds. Now, silicone is what you'd want to use for this because they're they're pliable, and that way you can pop them out when they're dry. But today, I'm just going to be putting this into the molds and uh, let it dry. I just wanted to show you, you know, what you can do with this and how you do it. But you just take your your sawdusto and you just press it down into your your mold. And I don't have gloves on for this. Probably should have, but uh, I've got the coloring mixed in enough into this stuff now that I don't have to worry about turning my hands color. At least I don't think I do at this point. This is a little lizard mold here. So I'm going to use green. And let's put this down here because my mold is flexing. And it's making it difficult to get the sawdusto in there. But it's all made just regular sawdust. I had a bag of sawdust up here to show you. Just It's a fine grade that I use. There's all different uh, textures of sawdust. You know, I don't see where I'll put that now. Let me look around for a minute. Here we go. It's, there it is. Sawdust. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Just in case you're not, you're wondering when she talks sawdust, what's she talking about? Now there's different grades of sawdust. You can get it in a thicker, like a wood shaving type. For these little projects like this, I want fine. If you're making furniture or something, you could go with a thick grade. Now I'm just trying to get all the little nooks and crannies in this little filler filled out here. And once you get it dried and you pull it out of the mold and you just take your utility knife and shave off anything that's over the edge of it any extra pieces and I'm trying to get it as flat down to the mold on there as I can get it just pressing it down real good And like I say, anything worth having is worth doing right. So you spend a little bit of time doing that. Get it clear down there in the tip of the tail. Make sure it's pressed in. Yep, something's going to tell me I'm going to wish I'd put gloves on. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to set that in the side and just let it dry. See, there it is. It's in that mold. It's a little lizard when it's dry, and it will chip off anything that ain't lizard around the edges of it. Now, here's one that I thought was pretty interesting that I thought I'd do in yellow, make it kind of a gold. These are just little embellishments that you'd put, like, on a, a dollhouse. Would be pretty. You could use them on uh, greeting cards, too. All kinds of little fancy pieces that you make, maybe boxes or, you know, I, I, I do boxes from time to time. You've probably seen on my channel, if you watch very much, how I've decorated boxes up. And this would be real pretty to decorate a box. Just mush it in there. And it mushed all the way into all the nooks and crannies. And I'm not going to bother it until it dries. 
and it, I'm going to leave it for a few days. And I'll be doing another video later of how to use these to embellish things with some of these pieces. Just mush it down in there. Just push, push, push until it gets in all the little detailed spots in that mold. Okay, hey, got that. Yeah, set that one off to one side. There's that one all filled. Now I've got a little dragonfly here that's pretty. I'm going to make that one in purple. Little purple dragonfly. There again, you want to push it down into all the edges. Make sure you really get it filled up. Get the tail all filled in. There's the little dragonfly mold filled in. Now, let's clean my desk up just a touch here. Let's see. I thought this was really cool. Let me pull this one out of here. I've got all kinds of these silicone molds, different things. But this one, let me move some of these out of the way here. This one has all kinds of um, borders. There we go. Get the camera over top of it yet. All kinds of borders. I'm going to use some of this black up in these. Just go to smushing it in. Press it down so that it's pretty level on the top edge. You can take your knife like I did on the belt buckles and smooth it down if you need to. Um, top edge of it. Or if you get it pretty smooth, then it's all you got to do. Maybe is run some sandpaper over it to finish making it smooth once it's dry. This reminds me a lot of Play-Doh, but it's made of wood instead. You could even use a mixture of colors, you know, to put in for borders or whatever you wanted to do with that. See, I just keep trying to make sure that I've got it all pressed in there really, really good. I want my detail to show when, the, when it's all dry. I don't want air pockets in it.
I'm making sure that I have the mold filled up here to the top of the edge of it. Okay, there's that one done. Uh, that's about all my black. I may use a little more black in another mold or something here. But that's about all of that one. And let's do, um, we don't have to do all of these, but let's do, let's do this big fleur-de-lis here in the center. We'll do that with some purple. Just keep working it down in there. Then I know there's some little specks of, of other colors in that there. I, I'm not going to worry about it. It is what it is. It just adds to the beauty of it as far as I'm concerned. really want to make sure that you get it filled because see parts of this mold stick up higher than other parts of it and so if you get it too thin on any of those high parts it's liable to crack or or even break when you take it out of the mold and i look at it all in one piece you can always cut it to size of what you want for your box or whatever you're going to put it on shelf Shelly used uh, molds like this to make borders for a bookcase that she has in her home using Sawdusto. But I do hope that everybody decides that they're going to give this a try and make this stuff it's easy made it, it's a little time consuming but it's easy made and you can do so much with it and she's got a contest running right now on over on her channel um she's got a facebook group where she explains the criteria for getting in the contest you make the product and make something out of it do a video on it follow her she got some little criteria there that you've got to Follow. And you do what she says to do. And you'll be in the contest. You got some prizes she's giving away. I've got the URL to her channel down there in the description of the video. Smooth it out there across the top good. Make sure that I got plenty in there. Because like I say, I don't want it to crack at all when I go to pull it out of there because I didn't get it thick enough. Ancient in there good. Just pinch off little pieces of it. <laughs> Do it just like you do Play-Doh. Okay. There it is. 
that one's all ready to dry. So I'll set it off to one side. Now, something else I was wanting to play with here a little bit. I got lots of molds. And I got these for jewelry. And I thought these would be fun to just put little pieces of it in there. Of the different colors. These few little chips of black. Some of this yellow. Now these these are special little jewelry molds. They got little rubber things there to leave a hole for putting your jump rings and stuff in. They're prime these are primarily supposed to be for resin, but you can put all kinds of stuff in here. So I'm just gonna chip off little pieces of different colors. Four different colors that I made up and make a few pieces with this just see what this turns out like this is how we learn <laughs> we just keep chipping little pieces off and mixing it up got more of that green than i got anything so i'll probably use more green in there but now that we got it in let's just start packing it That's the other side is probably going to be the front side of it. That's where I wanted the most color. So it's going to be kind of a camo. That's pretty cool. Now you want to be sure and get it all up there around the top part of it good. Where that jump ring is supposed to go. Let's pack that in there real good. You can take my thumbnail and push down in there and make sure that we get lots of product in there. And then I'll clear it off there so that I can see the little rubber tip. So we want it to leave a hole. Not that it would matter. You can drill it. You can do all kinds of things to it. But why make more work for yourself? Like I say, there's more green than there are other colors there, so I'll just use green in the back of it. Push that in real good there. I don't need to make the whole tray of it up. I'm just playing around with different, different molds. Now, Go we'll set that one aside. Maybe you can see there through the rubber. That's going to be like a camo style there. There's lots of ladies that like to wear camouflage colors. Now we got this. This little gemstone pieces. This is this is the cream de la resistance as far as I'm concerned. This is <laughs> this is what I was really wanting to do with this stuff. Is I wanted to make me some little gemstone embellishments let's make it out of wood we're going to fill in some of these little pieces here with different colors of the so this dough these will be cool on all kinds of projects Anything you're wanting to bling up and embellish up, these will be cute on. And they're made out of wood. I mean, you go to the craft store to buy your embellishments, and you're going to find out real quick that that stuff gets expensive fast. And here you're doing it for a little bit of nothing with stuff that you just had in your kitchen and some sawdust. So, and you can, when you get these out, you can brush them with a little glue and dust them with a little glitter and they're going to bling up as good as any rhinestone or 
fancy thing that you paid a bunch of money for. There's a bunch of these little ones. I'm going to fill the little ones in. They don't all have to be one color either. You can you can make camos out of them. <laughs> Stars and diamonds and all kinds of things in this little bitty mold. This is a cool little mold. And I don't even know where I got this thing at. If it was off of Amazon or if it was from Wish or AliExpress or someplace, I don't know. You just have to shop around and see if you can find one like it if you if you like that mold. But I thought it was a nice little mold to make all kinds of cool stuff. And like I say, th these are primarily supposed to be for resin. And, you know, you put some resin in there and embed whatever you want to put in. Glitter or little gemstones or whatever. But I see no reason that it can't be used for this as well. This is a moldable product. Just smash it in there. Smash it into the mold. Make a bunch of little fancy embellishment pieces. There's one that's faceted. That'll be cool. Pull in that. Some hearts there. If I had some red, I'd put it in the hearts. We could do purple heart though. That would be cool. And since this stuff is made with glue, it's sticking to my fingers good. <laughs> Okay, we got that. We'll set that one off to the side. Now, what else we got over here? Here's another one. It's a jewelry mold. Let's put a, a little bit of stuff in this. Um, let's do another camo piece. and Let's do a big one. Um, Green in there and some black. Just chip it up there. Just let it crumble into the mold. And then we're going to do some yellow. That. Now this will be the, the first in the series on the embellishments. There'll be another one where I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the embellishments. While I'm thinking on it, I'll also mention you know, down in the description of the video is the URLs to my Etsy store and my Patreon and my Twitch channel. I do a live feed on Twitch at 3 on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays Eastern Time. So you can come over there and watch me craft on The Twitch channel. Fill in the back of it with some yellow since I got a lot of that left. Now, 
I'm really mashing it in there because I want to make sure that I don't have a bunch of air pockets. And then I get it good and flat on the other side down to the bottom. And these again, they're jewelry molds, so they got the little rubber stopper up there at the top to make a hole for the jump ring. So you gotta leave that exposed or should leave it exposed anyway. Now I'm gonna take my brayer. And I'm gonna push down on that real good. Get good and smooth there. That's pretty good. Now let's flip it over and let's see. Oh, that's cool. Look at the. See if you can see the inside of that. That's neat. That's neat right there. So we'll let that sit and dry. It's already trying to pop out of the mold there, but I don't know that I want it to. But you can see the color on that. That's neat. But I'm not really wanting it out of the mold yet. I want it to firm up in there and stay. Okay, now what else we got? Let's see, I got a buffalo here. My buffalo look cool with some color added to it. Let's just sprinkle some of these camo pieces in here. <laughs> we have a camouflage buffalo. <laughs> I mean, you could make them any color you wanted if you had some Sodesto and you mixed it up with some cinnamon. That would be pretty. Chocolate. Shelly teases around, and a bunch of us in the woodworking community tease around about this stuff being edible. Uh, <laughs> but we wouldn't recommend it, okay? Everything in it so far that I have done here is natural, but I wouldn't recommend eating sawdust. It reminds me of the old commercials when I was a kid that I had, uh, I forget what the cereal name was, but Yul Gibbons used to talk about that cereal. Uh, he was the spokesperson for it, and he said, certain parts some or some parts of the pine tree are edible. Talking about pine nuts. It had some kind of pine nuts in it. And <laughs> yeah, you know, but I wouldn't recommend that you <laughs> go out and chew on a pine tree. <laughs> Just because squirrels do it, don't mean that it's good for you. And we'll just fill it in the back of it with, whoops, pulled it out of there. We're going to push it down in. There we go. Sticking to my finger since it's glue. I'll have to wait to see what that magic performs in that mold with the colors until we pull it out of there. Because these aren't clear molds like them jewelry molds are. I'm just going to keep filling in the back of it here. Just get it good and full. Press it down in all the little indentations in that mold. We'll have a pretty little buffalo out of that eventually. And I've got fairies up there. I got some leaves. I've got some some owls. Now the owls might be pretty cute made up. It's that it, it's a real fine mold. So I'm not real sure how this is gonna work in there, but you don't know until you try, do you? So we'll give it a shot and see how it works out. There's the buffalo filled up. Put just a little bit more in here. 
around that leg. So the last thing you want to happen is you go to pop it out of the mold and there's a weak spot in it and it pops the leg off or something. Okay, so we got that. Now, let's take a look at this little owl mold that I got. This is real thin. It's real fine work there, but it's got some feathers and stuff in it. So this might be pretty cute. Let's find out. You don't know unless you try. So we'll take this purple piece here that I got. And we're going to mash that into the little indents in it. And when I come back in a few days and we pop it loose, we'll find out just how good that did. If it picked up the details in that mold, I think it will. I wouldn't really know why it wouldn't, but we're about to find out, ain't we? Okay, we got that one now. I've got some green here. Let's do a little green now. Like I say, this would probably work a little better if it was warmer in this room and the temperature warmed up outside. We're in the 30s. So everything's staying pretty cold. Glue's harder to work when it's cold. But it is what it is. The show must go on. Okay, we got it mashed down good on that little owl. Now we've got another little owl down here on the end. And I'm gonna make him a yelling. We'll take our sawdusto and go smashing her in. Just like this. Push it into all those little indentations in the mold. And since this is, these are so thin, I'm leaving them kind of molded up, mounted up on the backs. Because I don't want it to be so thin that it breaks it. See right there, I can see that that's not thick enough because I can still see the lacing in the mold there so we have to come in with another piece and push it down in and if it hangs off a little bit on the edges that's fine we can always trim it up once it's out of there if we think it needs it Not thick enough right there on that little ear, so we'll thicken that up. And I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. Now, this is probably the last one I'm going to do. I don't think I'm going to do the little fairies and stuff that I've got because I don't have colors that I think would look good in those. I'd go probably with pinks or whites or something with the little fairies, but. I've got these leaves, these oak leaves. 
and I think they will look really cool done with the yellow and the green. So I'm going to do these little embellishments up. And you will see how cool this is when it dries and I do my embellishment video. Showing you how I use these up. Press it in real good. Any place that looks like it needs a little more, put some more in there. Now, I'm going to take the brayer over that, press that in real good, just like that. Now, I'm going to do one in green. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a little yellow in there too, just crumbling around in there. Maybe even a little black. So it's a few little pieces of black left there, and there's some purple. This is going to be a like a camouflage leaf, a fall leaf. A little more yellow. Okay, now let's press the dickens out of that. It all down there in the stem, good. Any place that needs a little bit more, just pick up a little bit more. Like I say, it's like playing in the play doh, molding it up. Press it down real good. Now I'm going to run the brayer over it. And press it in. Take my buffalo. I'm going to run the brayer over him too. Let's press it in. I see when I did that, there's a little piece there on the foot that needs a little more. So now's the time to get it in there before, the, before it has a lot of time to dry. There, that looks good. Now I got my dragonfly here. I'll bray it. Oh, and I braid it right off onto the brayer. Well, that, if it's going to do it, now's the time. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, let's put a little dragonfly back in there. He wasn't supposed to do that. Put 
it shows you how sticky that glue is. Okay. Now, let me get a paper towel and wipe my brayer off a little bit. I think that may be part of the problem. Glue on the brayer. Pop it out of there and clean it. It's not 100%, but it's way better than it was. All right. Yeah. There we go. Dragonfly. Yeah, we got these little embellishments here. I wanted to run over them. And I don't know. I'm kind of hesitant to mess with my owls a whole lot, but I'm going to press that down some. And I need more up here at this edge. So let me push it in. Okay, so there's the out. So there's six. There's seventh mold. Here's the eighth mold. The ninth mold and the tenth mold. And that's all, or the eleventh mold. I got one more. My little lizard. Oh, he's trying to stick. Yep. Lizard's coming off. Well. Okay, I see how you are. Let's try this little lizard. <laughs> Just break all that out of there and start again with my lizard. Whew. And I'm here to tell you, gloves would have been in order. <laughs> But it is what it is. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Never have been. Push that sawdusto molding compound that you've made down into the mold real good. And then I'll rub off. Some of this excess. I don't mind if it's mounted up a little bit over the, the back of it. As long as it's pushed clear down into the mold and I'm going to get the detail from the lizard. That's the important thing. Clear down in that tail real good. Smoosh it in. And since it wanted to come off on my brayer, I'm not going to braid this one down. So we'll just find out, you know, if should I braid it or not? We'll find out when uh, but he wants to pop out of there now, but it's leaving the tail behind. Now look here, Mr. Lizard. <laughs> and there's nothing saying that they're all going to be 100% either, you know. Because we're just learning how to use this new product. This isn't something that's been around for centuries. It's, you know, <laughs> been per perfected on constantly. My product's drying out a little bit too because it's been sitting here for a while. Now, maybe we're not going to get a lizard. Lord have mercy. Okay. I'm never going to say never. <laughs> but 
Failure is not an option. Push it down in there. There we go. There we go. That's looking good. Got a little foot there that needs a little extra. So we'll push that on there. Okay. I think that's going to be fine for the lizard. We're not going to mess with him anymore. And there you have it. So there's the embellishment video. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Share it on your social media so that everybody gets to see how we do this with this new Sawdusto product. And share it far and wide. Put it on all of whatever you're on. Um, you know, if you're on Reddit, if you're on Facebook, you know, wherever. Just share it every place. And now, I know what mom knows. Do you? Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda. <laughs>